welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a long time uh, that I uploaded a video, but I definitely did not stop working on the car, as you can see. Uh, these builds take a long time, as you all know, and there's a saying that goes that the last 10% of the build typically takes 90% of the time. So that was kind of true for me, even though a lot of my sort of time spent was sitting on the couch and waiting for parts to be delivered because I was experiencing a lot of delays. Uh, so in the last video, you saw me fit the center section. Since then, I've fit the front clam, the rear clam, I've fitted the engine, I've run the dry sump, and in the last video, you saw me with the dry sump, I had to put the engine in first to measure for the dry sump, and that's absolutely critical. Uh, that would be impossible to put the engine in and then do the dry sump and, and run all the lines. So you gotta put it in, take it out. Uh, that takes a little bit of time. Uh, also, I made a custom four inch intake for this car. The stock one is about 95 millimeter opening, which is exactly what the throttle body is. And as you guys know, I got the K-Tech 103 millimeter throttle body. So I didn't want to bottleneck it down to a 95 because then it defeats the purpose of having that 103. So I bought this custom four inch intake pipe and made that. Uh, I tried to do it five inch like a lot of the Corvette guys do, but five inch would just not fit in this car. There was the bends and everything. You'd have to kink it down and everything so that it was like four inch anyway. So the four inch looks really good. I'll show you that. I 3D printed a uh, mass air sensor holder for it and everything. So that looks really cool. Uh, I had to extend the wiring harness in this car. That was quite a pain. Uh, that's really, really tedious work. It's not hard at all, it just takes a lot of time. I spent numerous nights here having to extend certain parts and then you know, one of the huge parts of the wiring harness I had to extend, that's like, I think there was like 70 wires in it and you're just sitting there you know, soldering, crimping, um, heat shrinking to make it really right so you don't, you're not chasing down electrical gremlins at the end. So after that, I made custom spark plug wires. I'll show you. I got custom valve covers and hidden uh, coil packs. It looks really, really good. Uh, I modified the slave cylinder on the transmission to a GT2 spec. I'll show you the uh, slave cylinder that came with this car or what comes with a normal 2008 911 turbo. It's hooked up to, I believe, the ABS system, and it's just a complete mess. Like I don't know why they would, they would do this, but the Porsche GT2 system is way, way better. Uh, I also finalized a little bit of wiring underneath the engine bay and ran that really nice. Uh, worked out a couple kinks here and there, and then uh, that's pretty much it. So let me walk you through everything I did. All right, so starting at the front here, uh, just put the clam on. Extremely easy. I didn't film any of this because it's so straightforward. There's like two bolts that bolt uh, those little uh, vertical things to the splitter, the splitter bolts up under the chassis, and then these headlights, you basically just uh, mask the inside of them uh, with the exact um, imprint of what black surround should be, and then you go ahead and just bond them to the, uh, to the clam. There's a little bit of sanding and trimming, but really not much, wasn't that hard to do. And then these carbon fiber uh, winglets you basically just screw them in there's measurements provided and you measure up from the bottom and then measure from here and it's perfect and you just drill holes and there you go and uh, they bolt right through these wheel vents uh, they are just bonded to the front clam no big deal very very simple uh, let me go ahead and open up the front clam so you guys can see kind of what's going on in there. So I've got a master on off switch right there. I've uh, got the lift kit on the springs, which you guys all saw. Washer bottle. I'm toying around with the idea of putting different horns or more horns, maybe with like an actual 20 amp relay going to them because the stock horn is like pretty, pretty quiet. And I live in South Florida and we have like massive amounts of really terrible drivers. I was going to say something else, but just really terrible drivers. So I need a louder horn, I believe, because this thing's tiny and I don't want to get hit in it. Uh, not so much messing up the car, but just, you know, I'll probably die if I get hit in this thing. So moving on, here's the roof scoop. Uh, that is fixed on by two little uh, Allen head screws right there. 
And then what you do is underneath this, uh, this part, you actually do black vinyl all the way down and then you paint the inside of this thing. But other than that, that's on the body factory prefit. So it's really, really simple. It just goes exactly where it was before. And then like I did on the front, I used masking tape at a whole bunch of points on here to make sure that my body alignment was good. Uh, these vents also are just bonded on like normal. These guys right here, these are so cool. Uh, these use like a little bit of a hook system that goes right here and then there's just one screw in the back corner and they're perfect. These things right here, these uh, side splitters, they are held on with riv nuts that are drilled into the fiberglass. So they just go, I think there's like five screws and they go all the way and you have to measure. So this is definitely not something you want to smack against the side of a curb at all. So very, very simple. Like I said, I didn't film any of this putting it on because it's like, it's very, very like mindless type work and there's nothing special to it. There's no secrets or ways to do it. You just do it. So let me go ahead and open up the clam and I'll show you what I've got going on under there. All right. So here is the engine bay all finalized. I think it looks amazing. Hope you do too. A uh, lot of time and effort went into this, as I'm sure you guys know, and as you can see. Uh, so like I said, I got some uh, um, valve covers custom done. Those are Moroso aluminum billet valve covers, and then I had them powder coated by a guy named Matt at Blast Coatings. And such a stand-up guy. If you're in South Florida or anywhere and you want something powder coated, this guy's amazing. He actually made a mistake on the first iteration and there was a slight tint on this side of the valve cover, a slight red tint. And he told me to come and look at them. I couldn't see anything cause he didn't tell me like what I was looking for. He's like, just, do you see the problem? And I said, no, I don't see it at all. So then he pointed it out and then I was like, okay, I see it slightly. And he said, I'm not letting these leave the, the, uh, the place like this. So, you know, I'd like to do them over for you if you have a little bit of extra time. So I let him do them over. He didn't charge me anything extra. Amazing work. Couldn't be happier with them. I think they look absolutely killer. Uh, and as you can tell, uh, a stock LT5, the coil packs mount over these and then the spark plug wires go down to each cylinder. So this is obviously different. I hid the coils underneath. They're mounted to part of the chassis uh, using an ICT billet remote coil relocation. And then you can see my spark plug wires. That is all uh, DEI heat shield over the plug wires. Uh, the spark plug wires are extremely short. They're sitting like right under there. They're only a couple inches long each. Again, you can see the Cerakote burnt bronze headers. And then here is one of the areas where I had to extend the wiring harness. I do extend it like right along there. Uh, to reach up here, I wanted really clean lines and I wanted the wiring harness to go up top ahead of everything, not underneath or, you know, be subject to heat or anything like that. Uh, this is the overflow coolant tank for the intercooler system. That's the radiator system. And there's the transmission right there. And I'll show you what I did with the uh, GT2 slave cylinder. I also had dash 10 bungs welded in to the valve covers. So I have a Motion Raceworks catch can. They actually posted me on their page. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, to tell you the truth, guys, if you're watching from Motion, I just ordered because you guys have boxers and I do too. And uh, maybe because you guys make a really good product. But um, yeah, really happy with that. These things are pricey, but I mean, when, once you hold something in your hand that's that quality, you definitely know. So you don't really regret paying for it. So let me move on to the transmission. Uh, first I'll show you, so here's my, um, my four inch intake tube. It goes up and through here. You can see how I'm talking about like five inch tube just would not fit right here. So I've got my mass air sensor thing that I printed on my 3D printer, hooks up to the K&N filter, which gets uh, cold air right here from the intake. And I think that heat shield will do a pretty good job. Hopefully, uh, we'll see what my intake temps are, but I think it'll do a pretty good job. Then it goes into the K-Tech throttle body. No big deal. Engine looks good. 
Uh, I have my 3D printed throttle relocation bracket, which was uh, skinned in carbon fiber and lots of epoxy, high temp epoxy. So hopefully that will uh, prevent any problems down the road with any sort of heat. Uh, and also the way I made the, the uh, intake pipe, it actually torques up on it a little bit. So like if it got hot, it wouldn't like sink down from the weight of the throttle body. So that was just something I took into consideration. Uh, as you can see, there's absolutely no seats in the car. Uh, not yet. I have a broomstick though that I was using to hold the brake pedal down so it wouldn't roll uh, when I had the rear jacked up. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you the transmission and what I was talking about with the slave cylinder. All right, for starters, here is a 997 uh, Porsche Turbo slave cylinder. And you can see that it's got like, I, I mean, I don't even know what this contraption is. There's obviously this is a bleeder valve. And then I guess one of these goes to either the ABS braking system or power steering system. And then this comes from maybe the clutch. And what it does is it pushes this shaft right here, which then sits right in here and then it teeters this back and forth which then grabs the clutch and again Porsche uses a pull type clutch which is just pure insanity when you have to work on these things it's it they complicate things like to a level that they just don't need to be complicated just use like a, a push type normal slave cylinder and be done with it super reliable this is crazy so the problem with this is that I can't really adapt this to the Ultima. Like I wouldn't know what to plug or would this even work? So there are companies that sell a normal slave cylinder that attaches to the exact same mounting points that this does, but it deletes all this stuff. I could not find one in stock called around everywhere. No one had it in stock. They had them in production. They said, but then, you know, they could never, they could never get one for me. So I waited months before, one of the guys said, hey man, like what you could really do is just uh, swap it to a GT2 system, drill into your uh, bell housing, <clears throat> excuse me, bell housing, and you can just tap the, uh, tap the transmission with some M8 uh, studs and then bolt up a regular GT2 um, slave cylinder. And then they make this fork, which is actually swapped around to where this little indentation is on this side. So that's exactly what I did. So I ordered all the GT2 parts and the one in my transmission now faces this way. And I drilled a hole in the bell housing on the transmission on this side. And there's still a blank right here for this one, but uh, that'll never be used obviously. So I got to plug that. And the slave cylinder just pushes right there. So here you can get a look at it. That's what it looks like now. So it's just drilled into there. You can see the fluid comes in and it's a tiny little slave cylinder. Works perfectly. That RPS clutch is amazing. And then as I'm back here, I'll also show you, check out those resonators. So what used to be resonators actually. So when I ordered my exhaust, I ordered uh, straight pipes and it said in my order sheet, uh, no mufflers, no catalytic converters, and then I fired it up with these things and it really quieted it down. So uh, thankfully there's little screws on the side of them and you can just gut them. So this is a straight piped LT5 E85 car. That's uh, going to sound amazing as you guys heard. Also right here, right underneath the Ultima RS. I have to put in this grill and I have to put in the tips that I have inside. Might get those powder coated as well. Uh, I 3D printed this thing. This is a rear view camera and it has a rear view mirror in a normal spot in the interior of the car, but it's a screen. It's just kind of like, like the new Escalades have that. But, um, so this is going to go right here so I can see everything and I think that'll be a huge help. So with that, that's pretty much it. So that's going to be a wrap for this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing all the little things that it took to complete the car and I hope you guys mostly enjoyed the sounds of it running. Uh, this is really going to be probably the beginning of the channel. Um, I know the build was, you know, kind of long and drawn out and, and that seems to be the focus of the channel right now. But 
Coming soon, I'm hoping to have this out on tracks, uh, racing different cars. Uh, I'm definitely gonna take it to, if, if I can get appointment there, uh, Jeremy Formato, he did my um, startup tune. He has the channel Faster Proms, so I'm gonna tow it to him, put it on his dyno hopefully, and uh, make a cool video doing that. Once I get my seats as well, I'm gonna hit the, uh, hit the streets and, and have some fun with this thing, do some reaction videos and all kinds of different content for you guys. So stay tuned, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time, thanks.